lists of families available to us in Revit architecture. All right, so welcome back. So earlier you saw me draw this wall here, and this wall is actually a family, a family that's actually located or available to us within Revit. Now there's three different types of families. The first is our system family, and in our case here, this wall is the perfect example of a system family. If you remember how I located this family, I simply loaded it in from Revit. I really didn't create this wall system. It's already available to me. That system is already set in place for me to access this and maybe even edit it along the way. So an example or some examples of system families would be walls, roofs, and floors. Think of system and think of a wall. After all, a wall is a system. It's various elements that are put together in a certain way, a certain composition, and together they all form a certain function. So walls, roofs, you know, roofs in their many layers, uh, the structural, the shingles, the finish, or the, you know, whatever goes into that roof system. And even the floors, the concrete and the rebar, work as a system together. So walls, roofs, and floors are examples of system families. Now the second type of family we have, and, and again, those system families, uh, I've got to mention again, those are predefined in Revit, and we can actually uh, access them within Revit. So the other one is our loadable families. And these are families uh, that will actually be basically using, that you could, families that you can actually purchase or delivered, but basically they're installed in or around your building. So you have your walls and your roof, right, which are our system families. Now the loadable families are going to be things like your doors, your windows, your casework, your fixtures, furniture, and even planting. So keep that in mind. The examples I find really tell me exactly what it is. And then our third type would be our in-place families. Now with an in-place family, it's a lot like loadable families, so it might be a building element that you can load in to your project. But what makes in-place families different from loadable families is in-place families are actually unique to your project. You actually have the ability to create your own families and then use them for your project. Now, if you reuse those uh, families, so in a way that they do eventually become loadable families, if you use them or distribute them to other people, but the main difference is with in-place, and you'll see this a little bit later, it's actually creating a unique situation, whether it's a mass or a family. So just to kind of reiterate, we have system families, which are walls, roofs, and floors. We have loadable families, which would be windows, doors, casework, fixtures, and even furniture. And then we have in place, and again, those loadable families are, we can actually bring those in. They're in Revit. But then we have in place families, where we can actually create those ourselves in a totally new working environment that's totally dedicated and all the tools are dedicated strictly to creating uh, into to family creation so three different family types so now that we know that and now that we're going to be working with that pretty much the entire project and we're comfortable with the different types of families we're going to be working with I think it's time we start getting our hands dirty and we jump into our little project so what we'll do is I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll start off simple we'll work with a mass and then from the mass we'll begin working with building elements and we'll kind of move forward with our small architectural project. So I'm excited to get our hands dirty and get some modeling done. So I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll decide on how our building is going to be masked.